So then there are no better days ahead for them. Ooh, Not in the immediacy, right? They have to right? make some big changes, Tone. Okay. The Milwaukee Brewers moving to baseball saddled up CC Sabathia and rode him like a horse to the team's first playoff berth in 26 years. Sabathia took the ball on only three days rest again and threw his 10th complete game of the season, giving up only one unearned run and beating the Cubbies. And the last three starts, all on only three days rest, came in the final eight games of the season as his Brewers caught and passed the gagging, ah, Mets. Oh, they gagged. Tony, I know you're impressed. You got CC for Cy Young, for MVP, for president, don't you? I'm going to be serious here. I would vote for him for Cy Young. I would vote for him for MVP or split wow. it with, with Manny or split it with Manny. Wow. And I am going to write him in for president, <laughs> okay? Because he is a man and he is a beast. He did this at great personal jeopardy. He's a free agent. Yeah. Okay, what if he hurts his arm? Look at Ben Sheets, who can't go. What if Sabathia hurts his arm? He didn't go once on three days rest. He went three times on three days rest. You know, th this is, you put your career at jeopardy, and the courage and commitment of that is to... I agree and give a standing order yes. to Sabathia on yes. everything you just said. Yes. And you know what he's done? He was so great. He was at 9.999 when it comes to all the things you mentioned. A guy who was at 9.89, just under him, was Johan Santana, who has a gagging, choking team that did this the second straight year as they sit there and tell you last year had nothing to do with this year. You know what because Santana me? went out there toned three times in nine days this and shut people yeah, down. This surprises me that your New York bias is showing and not oh. your Midwest bias. Santana no. went on three I days hate the once. Mets, okay? Santana went on three days once. Tony, this three guy went three times. in nine days. This the, guy he was the only went three thing the Mets had. The people in Milwaukee should give him a hundred million dollars and don't let him leave town. Over in you college football. You are his football, agent now. My I should goodness. Be. In college football, Oklahoma is your new number one team in the land. The Sooners beat a ranked team in TCU, but the most impressive looking team of the weekend was undoubtedly Alabama. The tide rolled with 31 0 halftime lead over Georgia before coasting home. Well, on Oklahoma is number one, but is Bama better? Tony, before we started the show, I, I wrote down the teams I thought were my top five in order today. Doesn't mean this is going to hold in three weeks, but just today. I would vote Oklahoma 1, Alabama 2, and I wouldn't argue if you flip-flopped them. I'd vote Missouri 3, which not a lot of people have. I would vote Brigham Young 4th, and I would vote LSU 5, knowing that Texas could crash that party by beating yeah. Oklahoma in a couple weeks. But those are my top teams. See, the problem is with, with most of the teams you mentioned, not with Brigham Young, with most of the teams you mentioned, they're in very tough conferences and conferences that I believe have championship games after you get through the regular season Plus, you've got to go on the road and play some tough teams, too. So whatever may be invalid in three weeks, but we give credit to Saban for the very, very young team firing up right away and beating ranked teams right away and beating Georgia on the road and killing on Georgia. Georgia on the road. Stepped on Georgia like an ant. But they're in a rare air situation here that they haven't been in in a long time. Oklahoma is in that rare air every year, so I'm inclined to lean towards Oklahoma. But three weeks from now, they could yeah. both lose. Oklahoma's got some tough road they games, too. They both got difficult conferences. Let's take a break. When we come back, the Packers have problems. Denver is disappointed and a big win for the Bears. Jaws is on his way. He'll bail us out. Pardon the interruption. Presented by Guinness Draft. Please drink responsibly. Welcome back to Pardon the Interruption. I'm Susie Culver in Pittsburgh with your Teams at 20 updates. When rookie running back Rashard Mendenhall found out that Willie Parker was out and he'd be getting the start, his first reaction was wow. But the excitement is met with a huge challenge. The Ravens' number one ranked defense hasn't allowed a 100-yard rusher in 21 straight games. He's also heard... There's a lot of trash talk. He said, the guys told me some two, ungodly one, things will be two, said on the field tonight. Two, but I've been playing one, the game a long two, time. I won't let it throw me off, but it'll be something to watch for. And now with a report for the Ravens, here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Susie, Ravens rookie quarterback Joe Flacco continues to earn the confidence of his coaches. John Harbaugh told us last night that if the Steelers decide to shut down the Ravens' run and don't think Flacco can help win it for Baltimore, they might be surprised. Harbaugh said, I'm sure they're going to come after Flacco, but if he can get rid of the ball quickly, they're going to have trouble, and I believe my young quarterback can do it. Your Teams at 20 updates will continue all the way up until kickoff at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Now back to Pardon the Interruption with Mike and Tony.
We're usually sitting next to Jaws on Monday, but today he's got the set to himself at Heinz Field. Welcome, Jaws. <laughs> uh, it's beautiful here. Come on down. I'll be out there in a little bit. Okay, the Packers lost again, and Aaron Rodgers got hurt. It's insanity to have two rookie backups, right? Uh, absolutely. You know, Aaron Rodgers coming into this season, getting his first start in the National Football League, that's tough enough to be backed up by two rookie quarterbacks. If something happens to Aaron Rodgers, as you can see yesterday, you pay a steep price by having inexperienced backups as well. Charles, Tennessee is not entirely new to being good. They've been in the playoffs. They're 4-0. Buffalo, it would seem, is a total shock to a lot of people at 4-0. Who do you think is the better team? Oh, I believe Tennessee clearly right now is the better football team. We've got a long way to go, but if you look at the Tennessee Titans under Jeff Fisher, you know the template. Tough, physical, hard-hitting defense. Run the football, smash-mouth style. But I think what separates Tennessee right now, the veteran leadership of Kerry Collins. He knows where to go with the football, and he protects the football. He gives Tennessee the edge over Buffalo to me. I'm very surprised that you said that to Buffalo, where you're I from. I know, I now, know. Now we're going to go right to your heart again, the Philadelphia Eagles. The Bears beat the Eagles. Is that an asterisk game because of the absence of Westbrook in that game, in your mind? No, absolutely not. I mean, the Philadelphia Eagles have the biggest, most massive offensive line in the National Football League. They average 330 pounds up front. They've got two and a half yards to score a touchdown to win the football game. From that position on the field, Steve Van Buren should have been able to get in the end zone. <laughs> the Eagles got to punch it in right there. Okay. Jaws, the Chiefs finally won a game yesterday. They beat Denver. What's up with Denver? What are we supposed to believe about that team? You have to have defense week in and week out to hang in football games. That has to be the constant. When you look at Denver, that's their problem. You know, they've got an outstanding quarterback. They've got an explosive offense. But good defenses can slow down an offense. That's when your defense has to keep you in the game. And yesterday, the Denver Broncos fought an upstream battle all day and never got upstream. Uh, well, the Chiefs were paced to a degree by Larry Johnson. Do you believe in the rebirth of Larry Johnson? Well, not after one game. I think uh, when you look at Larry Johnson, you have to see the consistency. It's still a young offensive line in Kansas City that is growing together. But I think the big problem in Kansas City right now is they need to find a quarterback. It seems to have been the problem since I was there in 1989. They might have a quarterback problem, a consistent quarterback, week in and week out. They've got to find a young guy. Josh, we've gone long enough without talking about the Cowboys. Got to steer this conversation back to them. Look, T.O. has torn teams apart in the past. We've seen him do this stuff in San Francisco. We saw him do it in Philly. And what I'm wondering is, does Wade Phillips have control of the Cowboys? That's really a difficult question. I am really not sure after watching that game yesterday because, you know, I believe T.O. is a blessing as well as a curse because of the great talent that he has. But he's a player that demands the football. He demands being part of the action. However, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys offensively, they have a lot of stars on that offensive team. Jason Garrett lost his balance yesterday. I mean, Felix Jones doesn't touch the football with his explosive play. Mar Marion Barber, you know, eight touches. They run the ball 11 times. Come on, they've got a lot of weapons. You can't just focus on Terrell Owens. You got to have balance. I think Jason Garrett learned a lot yesterday. Our Browns quarterback Derek Anderson beat the Bengals. Now the Bengals and said, quote, we've got our swagger back. You buying that? <laughs> you buying that? No, I, I'm sorry for the chuckle. Come on. They beat the Cincinnati Bengals with Ryan Fitzpatrick, not Carson Palmer at quarterback. I, I would like to say they probably have their limp back right now. <laughs> Josh, we saw another direct snap touchdown yesterday. This one from the Jaguars. Is that the play of the season? How, what is up with that? You know, I love those kinds of plays. I'm a big gimmick and gadget guy. You know, you got to run plays like that three or four times in a football game. It makes the defense stay at home and respect everything you're going to do. I, I don't think it's a fan. I think you're going to see more teams going to more of those style of plays, the gadgets. All right, we got the Ravens and the Steelers tonight. Now, we know you're not allowed to pick, so Wilbon, look at Jaws. Is there any clue? Is there anything in the way he's dressed? Is there anything about him that indicates to you who he's going for? He's wearing no gold. He's wearing no purple. I don't, I, 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 I'm not picking up any hints. You don't have to ask me for a hint. I, I think Pittsburgh I love, is going to win at I, home. I love to be at home. How about the yellow seats behind him that's associated with the Steelers, Will Bond? How that about he's means, going you know what, with the Steelers? They don't have any purple seats he can have behind him no. in Pittsburgh, Tony. Thank you, Jaws. Thank you, Jaws. 
Let's take a break. Coming up, did it make any sense for the Raiders to try a 76-yard field goal yesterday? 76 yards. And Ed Hockley stays in the headlines, which is probably not a good thing for a referee. No. No. Really no. not. Don't no. want to hear. Don't want to hear your name. They always say if, you, if you're getting attention, it's, it's all bad. Good. Yeah, so I think those gold seats meant that uh, George was going for the home squad. You think so? Okay. Ahead on Sports Center, which teams have the best path to play in the World Series? Our Monday night film session goes inside the Steelers' struggling offense. Your call decides college football's top story on Sports Center, 6 Eastern, right after PTI. Wilbon claims I hate the emailers. You do. But if that were true, would I have lugged this stupid tin can all the way to Pittsburgh? You're I trying think to not. hurt it. Somebody get, get the, the mailbox one. away from you. He's trying to hurt it. Shut up. Tim Tebow personally apologized to all Florida fans for losing to Ole Miss and thus falling short of an undefeated season. He says no one will play harder than he will for the rest of the season. Isn't he being a little hard on himself? I don't know about hardness. It sounds like T.O. a little bit, a little wrapped up in his own situation. Hey, this is not basketball, Tone. He can't control the game all by himself. They got LSU at Georgia at Vandy, FSU. They got tough games, and he's not going to be able to control every snap Can I in those ask you games. a question? Did you watch that play? You yeah. know how they always go out of the shotgun? Yeah. He's 6'3", and he's a tank, isn't he? Y Why yes. don't you go right under center and fall forward for the one yard that you need? <laughs> I mean, I know they always operate the other way, yeah. but, but, but he, he's, he's giving the other people a four-yard head start. You know, the coach is making that call. Tom, well, yeah, I'm, I'm laying it on Urban Meyer on Tom, this he's one. a great player, as you know. But he, he is. not control yes. the SEC by himself. He ain't that good. The Raiders attempted a 76-yard field goal at the end of the first half yesterday. In case you're wondering, that means the line of scrimmage was their own 41-yard line. No surprise, it was short. What is the better headline for this play, Dare to Dream or How Idiotic? I was forced to watch this game. I was in Northern California at my friend Vince Williams' house. He didn't have a dish. Vince, get a dish. So I'm forced to watch this play. There was no time left in the half. He only kicked it about 56 yards, Tone. Yeah, you because there's no time in the hurt. half, it wasn't that bad a play. The only way you can get hurt is if the guy returns it, okay? Right. So it's not that bad a play. But it also, it's also Lane Kiffin being vaguely antagonistic to Al Davis and putting on a you sign think that so? says, fire me. Well, come on. You're not going to make a 76 They played pretty well. So now you're that not make it was it. against the wind, it so was at least a club win. You should have been trying it. You're not going to make it. Referee Ed Guns Hockley blew another call yesterday, and it cost the Panthers a touchdown. You guys rushed to his defense after the last blown call. Are you going to do it again? See, we didn't rush to his defense over the call. We rushed to his defense as a person, as an official. In this case, they called this, this, this touchdown pass back on a roughing the passer play, helmet right. to helmet. Tone is right. wrong. The defender had his head up. His face guard hits the guy in the helmet. That's why they're wearing the helmets, Tone. I'm going to tell you something. This has nothing to do with this call. This call is nothing like the San Diego-Denver call. Okay. But this has nothing to do with the call. This has to do with Ed Hockley. Everything that Ed Hockley does this year, anything that's on the borderline, everybody's going to jump up and down and scream. He has become the Bart man of oh, NFL referees. Not that bad. It, it, he's going to be haunted by this, Mike. This is going to be a terrible year for him. Terrible oh, year. He didn't have to change his name, though. He didn't have to wear a costume or anything. Let's take a break. But coming up, a golf fan takes one in the bean, and Wilbon will try to jam Northwestern into the show. Yeah, He's going to have to wear a disguise. He Tone, is. I will take Hockley and sit with him in Wrigley. How about that? I like Hockley, too, but everybody's scrutinizing yeah, every single that's thing true. now. And you and know what? It's going to be unfair. He's out there. And he's putting his work out. Pardon the interruption. Presented by Guinness Draft. Please drink responsibly. Let's get happy. Happy 67th birthday, Charlie Taylor. Taylor is the Hall of Fame wide receiver for the Washington Redskins, who caught passes from, among others, Hall of Fame quarterback Sonny Jurgensen. Tell us a Taylor story, Mike. On this fine family program tone, I don't know if I can, but I know you kiddies out there have no idea how great a player Charlie Taylor was for a long time. Happy anniversary, Willie Mays. On this day, 54 years ago, you made the greatest catch in history playing in the World Series for the New York Giants. Vic Wirtz of the Indians hit a ball in the polo grounds that caused you to turn fully around and catch over your shoulder in a clip that is every bit as good now as it was that day. I know you love that catch. Tone, how about this? The World Series are being played then. The playoffs now haven't even started. What's up with that? That's the way it used to be in the good old days. Happy trails to David Whitfield. The 48-year-old golf fan was taken off in a stretcher from the Tour Championship after being hit in the head by Ooh. an Anthony Kim drive. 
Whitfield was okay, but Kim said, quote, I thought I killed him. It was an awful feeling to see a golf ball-sized impression in his forehead. It was probably the nastiest thing I've ever seen, unquote. First of all, this guy is said to be okay. All right, never lost consciousness. My question would be, did the ball bounce into the fairway and give Mr. Kim a good lie? Here's what Kim should do. About. Take off one of those giant bejeweled belt buckles and give, <laughs> give it, it to the guy. Just lay give it, it on the guy as he's being wheeled exactly. off. Exactly. Time to find out what we messed up. Reality. Did you see that ball hit? It goes about 20 feet in the air after it hits him in Man. the head. I quote Michael Ray Wilbon from the college football discussion. I have Missouri number three, which not a lot of people have. Not a lot of people, except for the coaches, because they're number three <laughs> in the coaches' poll. Explain Hate to yourself, agree with Wilbon. them. All right, we're running out of time. We go straight to the big finish. Let's do Late, it. Jay Glazer reports that the Giants have fined Plexico Burris 40 to 50 times during his five-year run. That seems like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, that's why Coughlin suspended him two weeks, and it's justified. Steve Smith gave a touchdown ball to Ken Lucas, the guy he punched in training camp. Your thoughts, Tom? My thoughts are that he's trying to make amends, and Lucas has accepted this, and they are friends now. Josh Beckett hurt his side during a bullpen session, won't start until game three. Is that a big deal? Well, it is when your ace or your supposed ace can only go one game in a short series instead of two. Northwestern, baby, 5-0. and oh, All hail the mighty Wildcats. Yes, and Binghamton also undefeated and unscored upon. Last one, Bruce Springsteen will perform at halftime of the Super Bowl. You're excited, aren't you? Well, well I'm not, but I'm excited for all the Springsteen fans. I know he's a great talent. I'm excited they'll, they'll see their Liz guy. Clark is excited. Liz We're Clark. out of time. Yes, we'll try to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow knuckleheads. Check out the PTI podcast on iTunes. Let's go back to Bristol. Good night, Canada. PTI.